Hi everyone and welcome to today's video where we're going to be doing a guide for Byzantium for EU4 1.33 France. So Byzantium is a nation located in the Balkans and historically in about seven or eight years it's about to get wiped off the map by the Ottomans. Byzantium is a player favorite nation definitely one of the most popular and most renowned nations in the game due to its very very difficult start and the satisfaction you get from restoring your historical borders crushing the Ottomans and continuing to dominate the Balkans Anatolia and even restoring the Roman Empire. But make no mistake since the one point 33 update drop Byzantium has gotten a lot harder than the previous one or two patches I would say due to the fact that the AI no longer mothballs their forts to lower maintenance on them and in fact even builds more forts while you're in a war with them. In many of my trial runs I have had the Ottomans build forts while we're still in the war. They've constructed forts over here, over here and pretty much everywhere while we're still in the war. So definitely the AI is a little fort crazy and due to the fact that they don't mothball ball any forts we're gonna be using a lot more money and it's gonna be a lot more difficult trust me even for seasoned players they might have difficulties getting this run started and even by using various guides and following them to a t you will still have to restart a couple of times before you can get this working but anyway here's the strategy and here's how you do it and before we begin if you enjoy this video don't hesitate to leave a like it really helps out a lot and if you want to see more guides or more u4 videos in general definitely hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on anything Thing. Let's take a look at what we need to do as Byzantium. So of course this is our situation in 1444. We have five galleys, six transports and two light ships and we have an 8k regiment over here with 6k infantry and two cavalry and we also start off with our vassal Athens who has 3,000 troops and six ships. Of course we do start off with cores on the Ottomans and a core on the nation of Epirus here which is in fact going to be our first target in this patch unlike the previous patch where we fought the Ottomans first. But first we're gonna go Go into our estates and summon the diet. You can pick whichever agenda is best for you. Then we're going to give the clergy religious state, clerical advisory council, and religious diplomats. We're going to give the nobility primacy of the nobility, increased levies, and aristocratic counselors. And we're not going to give the burghers land of commerce, so no plus one diplo power privilege but we are going to give them patronage of the arts, commercial advisory board, and indebted to the burghers. Then we're going to sell titles and seize land. Next, we're going to take our main army here and move them to the province of Athens using our fleet. But first, we're going to merge our fleet. So then we're going to take them and we're going to start constructing three more infantry regiments over here. So that's three more infantry regiments right there. And we're also going to start constructing galleys, 10 of them to be exact, two in each province. So two over here, two over here, two over here, two in our subject Athens, and two in our capital of Constantinople. Next, we're going to try and hire one advisor, preferably a diplo rep or improve relations guy. I don't have one of those guys in my case, so I'm not going to be hiring anyone. But if you do have a level one diplo rep or improve relations guy, or even a level two, you should hire them to help you ally nations more quickly. And that's exactly what we're going to be doing now. We're going to try and ally Albania and the Knights and whoever else we can. But those two are the most important nations. So I'm going to start improving with Albania and the Knights right away. And we're also going to start immediately focusing on Mel. Now it's time to wait for this army to get to Athens and for these three infantry regiments to construct and we can move them to Athens as well. And there we go, about almost two months have passed and I've constructed my three infantry regiments and merged them with this main army right here. Now it's time to declare our first war, which is going to be versus the nation of Epirus. By now, they won't have any allies, but if they do, just restart. But 99% of the time, they won't be allied to anyone by the time you build your infantry. And we're also going to take our army here and give our ruler and heir military command and there we go these are my guys if any of them have a siege pip put them in charge of the army if not get the guy with the shock pips in my case it's the air right here and we're gonna take this army take these two horses off and leave it with four infantry regiments right here and five and two right here and we're gonna send the four guys to siege arta so it's time to declare an Epirus for the reconquest of arta and during this point, we will of course also delete the Fort in Morea because it's expensive. So now just send these four guys over here and keep these seven guys with the other ruler in charge to back you up. Don't pull your ships out. We don't want to destroy Epirus' fleet. So keep your fleet docked in Athens or wherever it is. Don't pull them out. Of course, during this point, you can also tell Athens 
to be supportive. And now it's just time to siege down Arta. Now that I've started this war with Empress and I have a free diplomat with that guy, I'm gonna tell him to spy on the Ottomans and we're also gonna go into the trade interface and tell the guy which is transferring from Aleppo to collect in Constantinople. Once the guy from Aleppo is in Constantinople, we're gonna tell him to hostile trade so we gain a bigger spy network construction over the Ottomans. The bigger our spy network on the Ottomans is, the faster we can siege their forts. So now it's time to just siege down Arta. During the time you're sieging Arta, you can turn off Constantinople to save some money. Once you do siege down Arta, move your entire army to that province and wait for Epirus to go from medium war enthusiasm to low. It should only take about a month or two. And there we go, in fact, it hasn't even been one month and I haven't even moved my army yet and Epirus is already on low. So now it's time to piece them out. Just recall one of these improved relations, guys. And in this war versus Epirus, we are gonna take the province of Arta for ourselves and make them our vassal as well, leaving them alive in the province of Cephalonia. We're also gonna take all their money, which isn't a lot, but everything helps. And that's our first war done. We've vassalized Epirus and we've taken the province of Arta for ourselves. Now, it's time to move this main army over to Constantinople. By this point, you may be able to ally one of Albania or the Knights. I can ally Albania, there we go. And I can also ally the Knights, which is perfect. We've gotten the two guys we actually want to have. But at this point, you can check and see if you can ally anyone else that might want land from the Ottomans. Of course, Serbia and Wallachia won't help because they have truces, but maybe you can get someone like Chandor or Karaman. I did forget to mention that you should rival Epirus right before the war starts. I did forget to do that in my case but definitely rival Epirus before you declare on them and of course if you've done that once the war with them is done you should rival the Ottomans. Epirus will be disloyal once you vassalize them but you can pay off their debt and placate them a couple of times to make them loyal. Of course you can also start improving relations with them. Now we're waiting for all our boats to finish building and to move our army to Constantinople. You can raise your fort now and activate the defensive edict as well. Once you have about 100 to 150 days left on the final ship that's gonna construct, which is basically the one in Athens, that's the slowest one to build, we are gonna start buffing up our army even more. And we're gonna be taking a lot of loans and hiring a lot of mercenary companies. It will be difficult to prevent yourself from going bankrupt but it is definitely possible. I've had success a couple of times before I actually recorded this guide. So we're gonna go into our land units and the mercenaries right here, and we're gonna hire four mercenary companies. We're gonna hire the free company, the High Dukes, and two other companies, whichever ones you want, preferably guys that have lots of shock pips. So the Armatoles right here, they have a general with five shock pips. I'm building all of them in Constantinople, by the way, and then I'm gonna get the Levens as well. Those are the guys that have the most shock pips in my case. It may be a little different for you, but of course the free company and three other merc companies is what we want. Now we're waiting for the ships and the merc companies. And once you've built all your ships and taking them to Constantinople, and once all of your armies have finished building, your game should look something like this. I have two light ships, 15 galleys, and six transports. Of course, the light ships and transports won't do anything. And we have the main army, which is 9-2, the free company, and three other mercenary companies. Now you should put your ruler and heir in charge of the free company, a ruler and heir in charge of the main army, and then the other armies should have leaders as well. By this point you should check to see if you've activated the defensive edict in Constantinople, and we're also going to be hiring a military advisor. Get a fort defense, morale, or discipline level 1 guy. I'm going to take this discipline guy right here. You should also set your subjects to supportive before you start this war, and you should be allied to Albania and the knights. Now it's time to declare on the Ottomans. But first, we're gonna hire an admiral for our navy and pop them out in the Sea of Marmara. Now once your fleet is in the Sea of Marmara, we're also gonna set these two provinces up here as provinces of interest. Once everything looks like this, it is time to declare on the Ottomans for the reconquest of Gallipoli. And we're gonna call in Albania and the Knights with the promise of land. In my case, the Ottomans are allied to AQ and Ramazan, which is a pretty good alliance for them to have. If they've allied someone like Tunis, of course it is gonna be a lot more annoying for you, but it'll still be a winnable war. But if they have someone like this, then that's a great bonus. And it is time to declare on the Ottomans. Now once the war starts, you're immediately gonna move your entire army over to Gallipoli. Once the army is there, you're gonna bomb Gallipoli, wait for it to tick over here, there we go, and went to minus 14, and we're gonna assault.
And there we go, just like that, we've won the Siege of Gallipoli with minimal losses. And as soon as you siege down Gallipoli, you're gonna move to Coachelli. Once you've taken over Coachelli, you're gonna move your entire army over to Salon. We did the same thing to Coachelli that we did to Gallipoli. Basically, bombard the fort and then assault it. And we're gonna be doing the same thing over in Salonic. Since the Ottomans have a couple of stacks, and in my case it seems that one of their stacks is actually over here since they did fight Shandar, in your case probably both of them will be in the Balkans. But that's expected, and that's how it's usually gonna be. You're gonna avoid fighting them for now, and you're gonna let them split off and siege. Basically, if they're split, that's the best case scenario for you. Something else that you might want to look out for is if they go to siege down the province of Cephalonia. Once they siege down Athens, in my case, they'll probably go for Cephalonia. In which case, you can just move one ship over to Cephalonia and prevent them from escaping. But now it's time to bomb and assault Salonic as well. Once you've taken a hold of these three forts right here, the Ottomans will probably be sieging you down right here, going to unsiege Coachelli, or maybe even going to unsiege Salonic. During this point, you're gonna be sieging Edirne, or maybe one of your allies will be doing it, like Skanderbeg is doing it here in my case, and you're gonna be carpeting them as much as you can. After we carpet as much as we can of the Balkans, we're gonna go and fight the Ottomans. Preferably, their stacks will be split, so you don't wanna fight them if both of their stacks are together. In my case, one of their stacks is right here, and I can't really see the other one, to be honest. But they do have it, as we can see. During this point, you may get unlucky, like it happened to me a couple of times, and the Ottomans may build a fort in this province over here. Which is pretty unfortunate, but it is what it is. Of course, when you put an army on top of the army Skanderbeg is in, make sure to allow attach to that army so Skanderbeg sticks to you. And this is how far along I am by now. The Ottomans are unseizing Coachelli, and they're building up an even bigger army. But that is expected. Even if they siege this back, they still can't cross, which is totally fine. And you might find yourself in a situation like this. I've got all my armies over here, including Skanderbeg, and we can totally wipe out this Ottoman stack right here. And there we go. That's a pretty easy win. We'll just chase them down and continue to carpet siege the rest of the Balkans. Keep an eye out for things like this. In my case, Ramazan is on low here since they've been attacked by Dulkadir, so I can just piece them out. Once you beat up the armies that the Ottomans have in the Balkans, basically you will be able to stack wipe them because they won't be able to cross the straits. And once you've carpet sieged the entirety of the Balkans, you can get rid of most of these mercenary companies since we are losing a lot of money right now. So I will get rid of these Armatoles, I will get rid of the Levens, and as soon as the Hajduks here are done sieging back Athens, I'll get rid of them as well. And now, once you've done that, you can just go stand on a Dirne and near it, of course. And you could even transport some ships over to AQ or someone like that to separate piece them. Or if you're feeling bold enough, you can go and attack the Ottomans in Anatolia. They will still have a fairly sizable army at this point. In my case, they still have 23k. And it is gonna be pretty hard to beat them, but it is definitely possible. It's up to you whether you stay like this and wait for the war score to tick up as much as possible, or if you go siege down Anatolia too. You'll be getting pretty much the same things even if you siege Anatolia or not because of the province war score cost. In my case, I'm at 60% war score right now, but I can get 11 more from ticking. To save some additional money during this point, you can transfer occupation of forts over to Athens. So I'm just gonna give Salonic here to Athens, Gallipoli as well, and even Edirne. Be careful not to give it to the Knights or Albania by accident. And if some of your allies try and do something like this, well, that's on them, isn't it? Poor Skanderbeg. Of course, if you keep the war going long enough, you can white piece their allies because they'll just get bored of the war. That's pretty much been my tactic when fighting Tunis as well. I just let the war go on forever until Tunis gets to medium or low war enthusiasm, and then you can just white piece them. I'm probably gonna do the same with AQ, but we'll see. Sometimes you do and sometimes you don't, depending on the war score and how fast you did this. If you've beaten the Ottomans up a lot during this point, they may even get declared on by someone like Venice or Genoa, or even the Mamluks. It has happened in a couple of my trial runs. And once you get to around 80% war score, in my case I have, I've gone up to max in ticking war score as well, and I did manage to white piece AQ because three years passed since we've done this and we've just been standing around. I do have a call for pizza as well, so it is time to piece them out. And of course, before you do piece them out, make sure to transfer occupation of everything that you gave to Athens back to yourself and here is what i recommend taking in this first war versus the ottomans i recommend taking all of your cores back except for their capital of Edirne. This is gonna make for easy war score later. I know lots of people say to take Edirne in the first war. I still stand firmly on my claim that you shouldn't take Edirne in the first war for easy war score later. And 
you should also take this province right here and all of their money. That is enough war score to do all of this. You may even have enough war score to take a Dirne, in which case you should. And in my case, in fact, I can take this province right here as well. And that's about as much as I can get. So all of these provinces right here, all of their money, and no Adirne. If you want, you can take it, but I don't recommend it, since like I said, it is easy war score later. And this is our first war versus the Ottomans done. We now have all our cores back except for the province of Edirne, which is going to remain the Ottomans capital. Of course, you are immediately going to be close to bankruptcy once you finish this war, but no worries because now you're set for the rest of the game. Of course, once this war is over, you won't have to core anything since everything is pretty much your core. And now that this war is done, we will also be releasing the nation of Bulgaria. Sure, they will get this province right here too, which is our core as well, but it's not a problem at all. And there we go, we've released Bulgaria and they'll have these three provinces as cores, and we can reconquer all of these cores that are theirs as well in the second war. Of course, we're going to be paying all of our loans once this war is done. I have 43 loans in my case, but it's not a problem. We can pay off all of them, apparently. Actually, no, I'm left with 13, but it's not a big deal at all. Now that this war is done, we can just mothball forts, lower army maintenance. Sure, we will be losing some money still, but it's not a problem since we won't be going bankrupt. And of course, once this war is over, you will be able to take the mission Recover Greece as well, which gives us perma claims on these areas right here. Now it's time to chill for a bit and figure out our next expansion opportunity. It's probably going to be versus Serbia. If the Ottomans warn you after this war, it can happen. The Ottomans can warn you sometimes. Don't worry, it's not a big deal. Sure, you won't be able to fight Serbia, but don't worry at all. Because if they warn us, we're just gonna fight them. At this point, it's super easy to defeat the Ottomans. But right now, you should focus on recovering your economy and chilling until we figure out our next conquest opportunity. Like I said, probably versus Serbia, maybe versus the Ottomans. And of course, during this point, you should try and find some other allies as well, like Austria, Hungary, maybe some guys over here too. Now, during this point, you may get a pop-up that the Ottomans are preparing to attack someone, someone like Trebizond, AQ, Delkadir, Ramazan, Karaman, Chandor, someone like that. If you get a pop-up like that, that the Ottomans are preparing to attack someone, that means their mind is set and there's nothing that can be done to make them not attack that nation. Now, something that you can do here to take advantage of that is actually ally one of those nations. In my case, I did just get a pop-up saying that the Ottomans are preparing to attack Karaman. And if I ally Karaman, of course, I will be called into that war. And I'll be at war with the Ottomans immediately once again, and I can just occupy this right here once again, establish naval superiority in the Sea of Marmara once again, and separate peace to get some stuff here, or even wait for Karaman to peace out so we can get some stuff over here. That's a very nice opportunity that you can take advantage of. In my case, I'm not gonna do that right now because it may not be realistic for most of you watching, so I'm gonna go down the classic route and try to have the experience that most people watching this guide will also have, which is basically fighting Serbia or declaring the second war on the Ottomans ourselves. But it's a nice opportunity if you want to take advantage of it. And there we go, the Ottomans did declare on Karaman. If I allied Karaman before the war, or even now, I would be dragged into it, and that's a nice opportunity. If Albania or the Knights break their alliance with you after this war because you didn't give them any land, don't worry about it. It is pretty expected. During this point, you can set some of these Serbian provinces over here as provinces of interest, so hopefully Bulgaria spies on them and builds a claim. Alternatively, you could build a spy network on Serbia, get these provinces when you peace out the Ottomans, claim these two provinces for yourself, and then release Bulgaria so you already have claims ready to go. In my case, I just forgot to do it. But this is the alternative way. You can set them as provinces of interest, and Bulgaria will spy on them for you. If you've paid off your burger loans from before, you could of course get new burger loans that will help you repay your regular loans. Like this. Easy. And now if I lower fleet maintenance, I'm not even losing money. Of course, inflation is really high, but like I say in A to Z, high inflation, good. Not really, that's just a joke. We will be bringing it down soon enough. And after some improving with Hungary, I am able to ally them. You will be able to ally Hungary as well, of course, if they're not a junior partner of Austria. If they are, you will probably be able to ally Austria, but once you fight one or two more wars, and once you get a bit bigger. And there we go, about a year or two have passed, and Bulgaria have actually built up a claim on this province right here, which enables me to go fight Serbia. And this is a perfectly reasonable 
Total Second War, and one that you will be doing most likely as well. So it's time to put our armies into place and go and get that gold mine, which will fund our early conquests. So it's time to declare on Serbia for whichever province Bulgaria made a claim on, or whichever province you had a claim on prior to releasing Bulgaria. They are allied to Bosnia here, and I will see if I can do something with them, so I will co-belligerent them, even though I'll have to fight silly. Their most likely allies will be Bosnia, Herzegovina, or maybe Wallachia. Of course, forts will be a lot more annoying than in previous patches. In my case, they've even built another fort on top of their capital here. So now they have a level 2 and level 3 fort in my case, instead of a level 2 and level 1 fort like it previously was. Luckily, Bosnia haven't built one. For your tier 2 government reform, you should of course take strength and noble privileges. And there we go, now that the war is done, I've pieced out Silly, I even made them orthodox, and it is time to piece out Serbia and Bosnia as well. If you've white pieced their allies, of course you're just gonna full annex Serbia, or whatever is left of them, they may have already lost to someone like Venice or Hungary, but of course the most important province is the gold mine over here. But since I co-belligerented Bosnia as well, I am gonna separate piece them and make them my vassal. Of course first I'll need to beat up their army, and then I'll full annex Serbia. Having four vassals will make them disloyal, or at least some of them. Them, but it is something I'm willing to do. If you're not comfortable managing four vassals, some of which may be disloyal and some of which may get their independence supported by some of your rivals, then don't do it. But I am comfortable doing it in my case, so I will, as soon as I beat up their army. And there we go, I'll peace out Bosnia, make them my vassal, force my religion on them to make them orthodox, and take all their money as well. And I will peace out Serbia for everything they have and all of their money. No one will really care that you're doing this, since these are orthodox nations. Well, at least Serbia is. And as expected, Bosnia is disloyal, some of these other guys may get disloyal too, but it's honestly not a problem. You can placate them once or twice, pay off their debt, improve relations, the usual stuff. And during this point, I am able to ally Austria as well. Like I said, you will be able to do so after one or two wars when you get a bit bigger. Even if you don't have Hungary, you will be able to ally Austria, and that's what I will do. Even though I'm two relations over my relations limit, it's still nice to have powerful allies, such as this. We don't really need their help versus the Ottomans, even though we will use it, but we might need their help versus someone else. Maybe Italian nations. Of course, once 10 years have passed, you can start annexing your subject Athens over here. It will be done instantly since you have a core on them as well. Make sure to give the nobility the nobility integration policy first though, so you don't lose out on any diplo rep. This will make your subjects more disloyal, but it's still fine for Athens. And there we go, it only takes one month dick to annex Athens. If you have a situation like this over here in your game as well, you can delete this fort right here. And some of you may be thinking why I'm not deleting these two forts either. Well, I will delete the one over here once we take everything from the Ottomans, and I will delete this one over here once we establish a foothold in Anatolia. Now in my case here, I did get Rhodes, and it's a pretty funny way that I got it. Basically, I got an event where I got a core on it, and then Separatists must have risen up in Rhodes. If we go into the province history, I think we can... Yeah, so it became a core of Byzantium on May 7th, 1455, and then they got some Byzantine Separatists, and actually it transferred over to me. This probably won't happen in your case, but it's a nice little bonus I got. Of course, I will delete this fort right here. During the point when you're not doing anything, you should focus on Devin Constantinople up to 30 to help speed up the spawning of the Renaissance and to tick off the age objective. Once you core up this province over here that has a gold mine, we are of course going to be full stating it and activating the Encouraged Development State Edict, devving it up to 10 production so we can make some nice income from gold and of course lowering autonomy once the month ticks over. And there we go, as we can see, after we fight two wars and get the province of Kosovo over here, income will not be a problem anymore. I'm only down to three loans right now. It's pretty stupid that you can't see your loans in 133. This button is grayed out if you don't have enough money to pay off your loans, but if you just hover over over the interest here, you'll at least see how many loans you have. At this point, of course, I'm also going to be hiring advisors. Get a yearly inflation reduction guy. I have a level 2 guy, so I won't be getting him, but I will get this tax guy, and I'll get this trade efficiency guy and this morale guy. Now that I've chilled a bit, dev this province up to 10 production to make nice income from gold, it is time to continue with my third war, and you will be doing the same, most likely versus one of these two nations right here. Since I did vassalize Bosnia, I will be reconquering their cores from Herzegovina now. And they're only allied to Wallachia, I will co-belligerent them since there's no downside to it, and I might vassalize them or something like that. We'll see though, we do need to recover their cores from Poland, a pretty powerful Poland, so I might not be doing it either way. But the war declaration is gonna be right here. Of course, if the Ottomans warned you after your first war versus them, you probably won't be fighting these wars, and instead you'll be waiting on your truce with the Ottomans to run out, so you can fight them directly. And there we go, this war is done, and in this war I'll be giving these two provinces back to Bosnia, and I'll also make Wallachia my vassal. There's no downside to it, even if I don't reconquer their course from Poland. 
and of course I'll take all their money. Now Wallachia is a pretty cool nation with some pretty cool military ideas and since I'm not directly interested in this land right here I don't really care about the past trade node they only have two provinces and it's gonna be a while before we can fight this big Poland that owns their provinces. I am in fact gonna be making Wallachia a march. This will help out a lot more rather than them being a two province vassal. And there we go, they're a march. At this point I've once again paid off all my burger loans and I only have one more regular loan left which means I will be taking more burger loans. If you do have above 10% crown land you can of course give the burgers land of commerce during this time as well. And I also sold titles and seized land again which leaves me with around 1000 ducats during this point. I'll use this to buff up my nation. For your naval doctrine, I recommend taking shipboarding for a chance to capture enemy ships plus 33% or free oarsmen for galley combat ability plus 15%. I will take free oarsmen since I do think it is slightly better than this one, especially when playing in the Mediterranean. It'll help us versus the Italian nations, versus the Ottomans, versus the Mamluks, and all of these guys over here too. Of course, you can swap to it anytime you want. Now that my truce with the Ottomans has expired, I am getting ready to fight them again. I'm just waiting for them to end this war versus general right here, and I am buffing up my army significantly. I'm also constructing a couple of marketplaces, and I'll be building a couple of churches too. Of course, you don't need me to explain the orthodox mechanics. You probably know them by now, but of course, when you get enough patriarch authority, you can commission icons. High patriarch authority is good. You can consecrate metropolitans to get more patriarch authority and I like to take this one, the icon of Christ Pantocrator, when I'm devving and building, of course because of the bonuses. The icon of Elusa is pretty nice during peace to help you with rebels, and the icon of Saint Michael is nice during wars. We're not really aggressive enough to use the icon of Saint Nicholas, and the icon of Saint John isn't that worth it. And now that the Ottomans have finally ended their war versus Venice and Genoa, I will be declaring war on them, and of course before this war I will activate the defensive edict, especially over here, but this time over here as well, since normally their entire army would be in Anatolia, but in my case here since they fought Venice and Genoa, their entire army is in Bulgaria, which means I'll be actually attacking them and going to siege them in Anatolia, but in your case probably their army will be right here, in which case you'll siege down the Balkans and then move on to Anatolia. But because of this, in my case, I'm doing it in the opposite way. So, it is time to declare our second war on the Ottomans, of course for the reconquest of Edirne, and I will call in Austria. And I do have a 20 galley stack once again in the Sea of Marmara to prevent them from crossing. For your first idea group as Byzantium, I recommend taking quantity ideas. We will need to field a massive army to help fuel all our conquests. We need to have an easier time beating the Ottomans, or what's left of them, then we need to fight a big Mamluks most likely, which will be pretty powerful by the time you're done with the Ottomans, and of course we'll need to deal with the Italian nations, maybe even the Iberian nations if you're going for a Roman Empire, France, Austria, Poland, Lithuania, and all of these guys. So quantity is a must. Of course we're already focusing on mill since the start. And there we go, my second war with the Ottomans is done. Honestly, a super, super annoying war, man. I did lose out naval superiority, Austria did get pieced out, and I can barely get any war score on them, because they've deleted all of their forts in Anatolia. Looks like at the start a problem is the AI building forts in the Balkans but later in the game the problem is them deleting forts in Anatolia and we're just chasing each other around, sieging and unseaging so it is time for me to peace out. But here's what you're gonna take from the Ottomans in this second war versus them. Obviously you're gonna give Bulgaria all of their cores back over here, you're gonna take the province of Edirne for yourself as well, the province which we declare for, and you're gonna take these three provinces over here too. You can take some of these provinces over here too if you want to, you can take some cash if you want to, honestly it's up to you, but the most important thing is Bulgaria scores Edirne and these three provinces right here. And that's our second war versus the Ottomans done. After you get all of Bulgaria's scores back, you will be able to take the mission Conquer Bulgaria, which gives you claims on Naples. Now that this war is done, I'll be annexing Epirus as well. For your tier 3 government reform, you should take centralized bureaucracy. Don't forget to lower autonomy whenever you can. Once you give all of Bulgaria's scores back, you can start annexing them as well. Now as Byzantium, we do start off with two monuments as well, the Hagia Sophia in Constantinople, which gives us some nice orthodox stuff. It's a pretty good monument, the Sultan Ahmed Mosque, of course we can't use Use this and we indirectly start with one in our subject Athens as well, the Parthenon which at tier 3 gives us some nice advisor discounts, a pretty strong monument, the Hagia Sophia is pretty good for 
Orthodox nations too will also get the Rilla monasteries from Bulgaria once we annex them and this is a really nice one as well and then we'll be using the mausoleum at Halicarnassus later too and this one's not bad either so overall we do have five monuments in our vicinity which we'll be conquering pretty much immediately and we will be able to use four of them with the exception of the Sultan Ahmed mosque you should focus on upgrading all four of them even though none of them is super super OP my favorite one is the Parthenon because of the advisor discounts but upgrade all of them. And by around the 1480s, your game should look a little something like this. Basically, we started off as Byzantium and fought a pretty, pretty hard war versus the Ottomans in order to gain our cores back. A harder war than in previous patches, I do have to say, but by building up so many mercenary companies and by barraging and then assaulting the forts in Gallipoli, Coachelli, and Salonic, we were able to get those forts pretty quickly. That will enable us to trap the Ottomans in the Balkans and establish naval superiority in the Sea of Marmara, which will prevent them from crossing. After that, we siege down the Balkans, stack wipe their armies, and then continue to just stand on the Balkans until we could get sufficient war score versus the Ottomans to piece them out and even white piece their allies without going to occupy them at all. Of course, that first war is going to take quite a while. In my case, the second war took quite a while as well because Austria got pieced out and because the Ottomans didn't have any forts at all in Anatolia. In fact, they've just built one back up in Shugla. Actually, no, that's their capital. So they deleted all of their forts in Anatolia, which made the war annoying for me. But in that first war, we also took some provinces over here to release Bulgaria from. And after that, we fought these nations over here. Like I said, you might have been fighting Serbia in your second war. Or if the Ottomans warn you, you would have waited for your truce with the Ottomans to expire. So you fight your second war versus the Ottomans as well. But if you did fight Serbia, of course, you should have taken the gold mine in Kosovo, dabbed it up to 10 production so we can make some nice income from gold. And you've probably taken over Serbia and Bosnia as well. You may have these guys as a vassal or you may own them directly. It's pretty much up to you. And if you could take advantage of a little situation like this, you may have Wallachia as a vassal as well. Like I said earlier, if you got an opportunity to ally some nations that the the Ottomans would declare on you should have done that basically shortening your truce with the Ottomans maybe you can take something from them in that war as well or if you've gone the more classic route you would have just waited for your truce with the Ottomans to expire and in the second war we took back all of Bulgaria's scores and established a very very strong foothold in Anatolia as well by this point you own pretty much the entirety of the Balkans either directly yourself or through vassals you probably won't have annexed Bulgaria either but I am annexing them right now as you can see and you should be annexing annexing them during this point as well. Of course, I don't own Albania, Dalmatia, and some islands over here, and you may not either, or you may have already fought nations to get those areas as well. But by now, we're in a super, super strong position. We are on the Great Powers list. The Ottomans aren't on the Great Powers list. And honestly, after you beat them in that first war, the other wars are so, so much easier, and you won't have to worry about that at all. Like I said, by this point, we're a super, super strong nation. I have a big stack over here standing in Constantinople 24 or up to combat with at least an infantry and cavalry. I don't have that much money for more cavalry right now. I'd rather make more money and we're almost at force limit. Pretty powerful subjects that we're annexing as well and we are making a nice amount of income. I'm making 14 ducats right now with army maintenance down and forts unactivated but if I activate forts and increase army maintenance we're still making a pretty nice income 7.6 ducats a month which is pretty pretty strong. Of course the tax events in the early game do hinder you quite a lot as well as the crown land ownership but you will be getting that back by seizing land once all estates are over 50 loyalty as you know during this point i have also been building buildings i've built marketplaces in all the center of trade provinces apparently bulgaria has been building some themselves as well i've built workshops in all the high value trade good provinces in my subjects as well so in these copper and iron provinces here in the cloth province in bulgaria as well a couple of churches here and there a couple of army buildings here and there basically build whenever you can i do have the icon of christ pantocrator active for construction and dev discounts and i've also bumped up these three provinces right here to level two centers of trade which will help us trade even better i do have 10 light ships also protecting trade in constantinople so that's a nice bonus i have 15 galleys right here ready to fight and that's pretty much the extent of our navy right now of course you will be building more light ships later to protect trade in ragusa constantinople aleppo alexandria and so on and later on of course you may even move your main trade node to venice and genoa 
if you're doing a Roman Empire run or if you just plan on expanding eastward towards India and stuff like that for all those nice nice trade bonuses you can of course leave your main trade node in Constantinople since it only has one exit we can effectively make it an end node by controlling Ragusa as well that's how you basically make an end node and it's what pretty much happens with Constantinople if you're the Ottomans or Byzantium after this point you will continue to expand in the same directions that we have been expanding and basically taking over the Balkans later moving on into Italy as well you're not really too interested in these regions over here so no need to push into Vienna or the past trade nodes they really don't concern you you can just skirt around Austria here and go into Italy beat up the Ottomans for Anatolia no need to expand into the Pontic step really these lands over here are not that good there's really no reason to go up here except for some centers of trade maybe if you want to but of course you will push into the Aleppo trade node in the Mashriq region as well you'll push into Egypt the Maghreb of course depending on what your goals are maybe you want an Eastern Roman Empire maybe you want a Roman Empire maybe you want to expand this way for those nice Indian and Persian trade goods the choice is yours of course you once you beat up the Ottomans you will face a pretty strong Mamluks but by that point you will be super super powerful yourself due to your massive economy and massive army as well due to quantity ideas now speaking of quantity we did take it for our first idea group and for your second idea group i do recommend religious it is a super super powerful idea group as byzantium we are an orthodox nation we will be expanding primarily into non-orthodox nations almost exclusively so you can use the deus volt cb before imperialism comes around and of course you will be converting everything once you get the sufficient missionary strength from religious ideas for your third idea group i recommend taking quality or offensive to buff up your army quality even more so either quality or offensive the the choice is yours pretty much i would probably go with quality but it depends it's a spur of the moment type thing and i may even go with offensive but one of these two for sure and for your fourth idea group i do recommend taking trade ideas to maximize all that income even more after that it's pretty much up to you you will be unstoppable either way so quantity religious quality or offensive and then trade then it's up to you for your tier 4 government reform you should take meritocratic recruitment for tier 5 you should take general estates but when absolutism comes around swap to royal decree and if you max out over 100 absolutism swap back to general estates for tier 6 you should take let us and for tier 7 you should take political absolutism but once again if you max out over 100 absolutism you should swap the legislative houses for plus one admin possible policies so you have four instead of three if you have the purple phoenix dlc which comes with the uh extreme version of eu4 whatever i don't know exactly how you get the purple phoenix dlc you do have some nice decisions here as byzantium where we gain tradition prestige and stuff like that when conquering lots of areas you can also mend the schism as byzantium when you complete certain missions over here and byzantium does have a pretty nice mission tree which gives you claims on pretty much the areas of the roman empire and the eastern roman empire slash byzantium mainly and of course once you do conquer the five holy orthodox sites which are rome constantinople alexandria jerusalem and antioch you will be able to mend the schism and basically every nation that is catholic that likes you will actually flip to orthodox and basically you can mend the divide between catholicism and orthodoxy but this time with the orthodoxy victorious and overall there's awesome awesome flavor when playing as byzantium the mission tree is pretty nice it'll lead you to conquer everywhere you need to conquer follow along the mission tree follow along all the areas that we've been conquering in so far and continue to expand in them and like i said around the 1480s your game should look a little something like this if you're not that confident in your abilities or if you're not sure if your game is gonna go like mine this save file is available for all youtube members in the save games discord channel and you can continue playing as byzantium from this date forward let me know in the comments below what's the next nation that i should do a guide on if you want to watch me do stuff like this live you can follow me on twitch.tv slash the red hawk live and if you want to catch up on stuff from over there you can subscribe to the second channel link is in the description if you enjoyed this video don't hesitate to leave a like it really helps out a lot and if you want to see more guides or more u4 videos in general definitely hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on anything and you can become a member today and join the discord the link is in the description thank you so much for watching and i'll see you next time with another eu4 video